Yeah, I mean, growing up in Lawrence, every August was like, you had to move at least like five houses, but you got paid in pizza and beer, which was pretty good at the time. Yeah, and you probably got your pick of like the leftovers. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, trash or dumpster diving yeah. in Lawrence around August. The best find was a Dreamcast, and then you could uh, burn all the games onto just regular CD-ROMs or CDs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we had like 500 games, and we just like have a good time. The door cack. Yeah, you just get a Dreamcast and rip all of the games off the internet. Dude, they had some really good games. They did. I remember Dreamcast. Uh, it didn't have that crazy controller with the LCD screen. In yeah, it. and like you could put another. Sc- it I don't had know. like another thing that would go in it. Yeah, yeah, screen. it was too much, and they kind of didn't feel good in your hands because it was like. But I'm used to like little NES controllers. That's still my favorite controller. The OG. Yeah. But they're not that close. It's like this. I know, but I... That's like Game Boy. I have an original Game Boy, too. Those are cool. And I you, had one you have to get like a magnifying glass to actually see it? Yeah. I had one in fifth grade. Really? I used to take to school. Did you ruin your eyes with the VR boy? No, I, I, was, I wasn't rich. Yeah. I don't even remember how I got the Game Boy. I feel like I saved up money... And it was well past Game Boy's expiration date. Like I'm pretty sure Game Boy Color was out, and I and I I had saved up some dough and bought a used Game Boy at like Game Co or something. Remember Game Co? No, I'm from Lawrence. Are they have Game Co in Lawrence. No, I forget what we. It had. was like a tra- chain video game store in the 90s. It no. ripped. It ruled. It ruled supreme. I mean, back then downtown could still support local retailers. Yeah. So there was like there was a local game store back then. Yeah, there was a couple, but like uh yeah, they just have like weird stores all the time, just like knickknack stores, you know. And now we have Amazon. Now we have Amazon. Bow and down to Jeff Bezos. Now here we are. Welcome. Oh yeah, we gotta do your introduction. Do my introduction. I don't even know if I should keep doing the intro. I don't know if Yeah, are. we we gotta do it. Do you it. want All me right. to do it? No, I'll do it. Okay. Yeah, you do it. Okay. Welcome, audience, to Black Magic TV with Tyler McDowell, also known as High Lord. I don't think that's how I do it, though. Oh, you don't like that? No, I mean, you just gotta... You wanna like, be sleazier, or what? Yeah, you gotta be sleazier. You wanna dirt bag? Yeah, dirt bag status it. Hey, man. <laughs> that's it? Now if you're, you're watching it. this, man, hey, this is like a... Uh, <laughs> that's exactly how I do uh, it. <laughs> Black Magic TV, man, and it's like I'm Tyler McDowell. And look at my quaff. <laughs> All right, now you're fucking talking about my new haircut. Leave no, my, it's, I'm a bald hair. man. I'm just of all people's haircuts. I, I didn't address my haircut since I cut it. If it's only been one episode that it was like this, the J episode. Yeah, but, but yeah, welcome back, Black Magic TV. Obviously, if you're here, you already know that. And today we have Anson, the Henri Magi, with me. You guys, you guys might recognize him <laughs> from his various escapades through out, the centuries. Out, yeah, through the millennia. The millennia. You know. But now I'm just regular old bald Anson. Just bald Anson. <laughs> I always gotta wear it. Yeah, got, why don't we knock in my hair, do? I'm jealous. I know you are. I'm it's jealous okay. of all hair. Is it uh when did you go bald? Oh well, I probably started going bald at twenty. No shit. But did not just denied it. Did you wear a lot of hats? No. Is your dad bald? No. Wow. It's your grandpa's, remember? It's yeah. your mother's father. Yeah. So my my grandpa's got is ninety two. He's in the nineties. Full head of hair still. Fiery red. Just now in like the last six months, he started looking old. He's looked the same basically. But it's because he's wearing makeup. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's wearing special effects makeup. He's looked the same like almost my whole entire life. Damn. He's gotten shorter. 
a little bit it felt like like he shrunk a little like the hunch kind of yeah but he's like he's taller than i am still he's seven eight no he's like six probably six two six three okay that's pretty damn because i'm like right at six Huh. Five eleven and three quarter. I'm like the most average size for male everything. And when I used to do theater in Except college, for your micro penis. Well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can't win them all. You can't win them all. Uh, but I just remember when I was doing theater in college, they loved me because everything fit, and they never had to tailor anything. So anytime I'd play these like really minor roles, but I'd have like seven costume choices every time. Sick, but I didn't get to choose my costumes. That was the director's you just choice. Had choices, you know, because I would have gone with assless chaps every time, every time. But they never, no. never once. They said there's no, there's no need for assless chaps in Macbeth. That's weird. And then I was like, you can't say Macbeth in the theater. And then I was like, oh, I just said Macbeth. And then why can't you say Macbeth? In it's the like theater? bad. It's like a no, no, bad luck. Say Macbeth in the theater? Yeah, yeah. You gotta like spin around and spit over, spit out the back door. And I always thought it'd be cool to like do that shit when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. But it was like I couldn't I couldn't handle the kids that did theater. Yeah, it's like I, in high school I was like way too like we were just too fucking punk and bonner's whatever like if you could imagine what the most punk you could be in bonner springs kansas is before the internet existed that was us we were about as punk as you could get <laughs> in bonner springs that kansas. country punk sort of yeah 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 because like yeah because you know we like had jobs and like yeah, we didn't feel that's we, so we, punk. Like we didn't want to be pieces of shit you know what i mean oh like, like, like we had SLC a work punk. ethic and yeah, we had yeah, yeah. like so we weren't like walking around like oh like all the trust fund kids like that's what later on i realized like all the kids that were too punk they all had like they were running from something they had like wealthy parents yeah know? yeah and then you see them now and they're still then they then they're like gave in 40 years old with studded jackets on oh okay i thought they'd like go stockbroker no none of them ever did that i don't think not that i know well most of them just continued Punkin. Yeah, you like. You know anybody that like you see them and like when you're in your 20s, like you don't really think about people are at the bar every day, right? Like. I, I think being from Lawrence, I definitely did. You thought about that? Yeah. It's called the Velvet Rut there. Well, what I'm saying is I worked at the bars, right? Like I was a bouncer. So I would but see these right. people, right? In case yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I worked shows in Lawrence. I worked for Pipeline when I was in. Oh, high that's school. right. But like, I would see there's people that I saw when I was bouncing. They came every night. They came every night, and if we went out tonight, they'd still be. Out and there. we went to enough places in the city, we would see some of them still for sure out every night. And it's like, how do you do that? Yeah, but that's like the weird, like when I used to be in the bar scene, it's like, it's weird because like I didn't drink that much. So I'd maybe go once every two weeks, maybe every weekend. And then, but you know, the people that are there every night. Yeah. There's always some drama and I got to catch up every seven days. But what I'm saying is how do they do it? How do you afford that? Yeah. Because, like, also they're building up a tolerance. So they got to drink more and more. Right. Every time. So, like, who pays your rent? You don't have a job. Like, these are people with no jobs. Like, I've always known these people that never have had a job. You know what I mean? And they seem like scuzz bags, but then it's like, how are you getting by? Like, you don't, you've done nothing in oh, 20 years. You don't think they're, like, hustling on the drug front? I don't know. I guess someone could be, like, sucking for money. Sucking and fucking, they call it, I think, down at the trailer park. Well, it's a legitimate job now. It is, I suppose. You know. I suppose. We respect our sex workers. Yeah, I still just call them hookers. Okay, well, it's wider than that, right? I never, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I think that's... It's like... The, 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 like... <laughs> like <laughs> there's a spectrum to everything, right? And the spectrum of that goes from... 
uh, sucking off truckers at the Flying J to like OnlyFans nudie photos. But I thought like even it covered strippers. Now. That I guess it does. That's what I'm saying. That's the spectrum. But I had a friend, and she made a. She had a client, and all she had to do was show up and play poker with them naked. Yeah. And then they'd go out and like have dinner and drinks and have a good time. That sounds like a sugar daddy. Yeah, but I don't think that's a client. Well, I don't think she was I don't think exclusive she was, to him. I don't think she was paying taxes on that. That's no, what I, I I think that's what I my, I'm gonna that's the stance I'm gonna take is when are these sex workers gonna start paying their taxes? When it becomes legal. It I mean, a lot of it is legal. Well, I mean if you're an OnlyFans, yeah, you have to pay your taxes. I guess right? so. Watch. This is the new tax podcast. Uh, new tax podcast. If you have an IRA, uh, tune in after the ad break. The Irish Republic Army? Oh. Is that what you're talking about? Are they still around? I don't think they've ever left. Oh, well. We I mean, wrong. you know more about the Troubles than I. Uh, it's just very confusing, and it seems like a lot of bullshit, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a lot of... It's, it, the, the IRA is like the Ku Klux Klan, where they kept fighting with each other. So one guy would leave and be like, "We're now we're the the new fighters of the IRA." Like they <laughs> so just got like, tougher. Or no, crazier. there's just like so many like mm. sex, and then most of the time, I think they're just killing each other. Not. I will say I had to read a lot of Irish poets. Yeah. In college, uh, but they're good at poetry. Not a fan of the novels. Like Dubliners, I had to read that like three times in college, which made no sense. Weird. I don't know what that is. What is that? It's uh, I don't know. He's like one of the most renowned writers, and I look like a fool. I I, what was that degree for? When I can't even name. I don't know. I yeah. forget. I I forget who that is. What's it about? Uh, it's a bunch of short stories actually, but it's oh. just different stories of Dublin. A lot of drunk people. Well, it's like. It's about potatoes. the poverty and well, yeah. I roll my my eyes saying that. But it's got yeah, oh, the poverty. The I'm just say, I'd say it's the poverty and the potatoes. Like there's a story about like this kid wants to go to a fair, but he's in a hurry because he wants to like hit on this girl, and then he goes to the wrong gate and spends too much money because he's late, and then like she's not even there, and that's like the end of it weird that you know where i'd like i like tests of the dober fields which is written a little earlier than that one but that's but that's an english writer and english oh. writers weren't good at writing until after 1800 yeah we don't recognize england in this household well, you knew, you found out you're more Scottish than Irish now. I know it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> royalty at that, and you forget that the. Uh, but we came here. It's all Scottish royalty too that run England. Yeah, technically, you know, if you go down like yeah, the if whole, you go down the rabbit hole. Jeez Louise! Well, luckily here we just all we have for royalty is the Kennedys. They just have that band. Well, we have the Kardashians. You think they're royalty now? I mean, I know nothing of them. Which is you not. You know any anybody song. else so famous for being good looking? Well, I was going to say something very risky. But <laughs> I, didn't say that. I mean, haven't they all released sex tapes? With... <laughs> I don't know. If released is the. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean. Well, I've not seen any of them. Yeah, I'm sure you haven't. So me either. Well, you know, there's lots I think of that choices way, now. I think there. their mom had quite the recipe of being fa creating famous people. Well, wasn't I don't know. Whatever, I'm bored of that. Celebrities. Celebrities. You know, I mean, you're the one who's closest to celebrities with your hot gits. My hot gits. Yeah, with like, well, you had country royalty on here. Country royalty. There you go. I guess you consider that would probably be close to royalty, right? I consider them the own. Well, maybe not only country royalty. Does does uh, what is her name? Hannah Montana's real name. Miley Cyrus. Does she count as country royalty? I don't think so. The Cyruses don't. I uh, know because there's only two of them. 
Okay. And they're really not prevalent. I mean, his dad and his grandpa are still. I know. Making music. I know. When's the last time, other than that little Nas X song, when's the last time you heard Billy Ray Cyrus? I mean, but that I was, was I a think hit. He's been making Christian movies. I mean, he is. I think so. Oh well. I'm I guess they were all on Hannah and Man- Hannah Montana. You better not mention years. them because Adam's going to call us and ask if it's that's the movie of the week. Yeah, are we watching that? Are we watching any of those <laughs> Kevin Sorbo movies? <laughs> <laughs> well, Fucking Kevin Sorbo. Yeah, I guess that would be country royalty, probably. The Hanks. The Hanks. The Hank Williams. The Williams. The Williams family. I guess maybe... Um, that's like a dynasty, really. Oh, dang. Because all of them, yeah, like his aunts and uncles are all musicians. That's true. They're just like all doing it all the time. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Who else? Who else? Who what else? other musicians are like that? I don't know. Well, the Jacksons. Any... I mean, they're all they all did it, dude. They're probably the most royal like. But the problem is it because not it only... was one generation though, right? And then they did the and then never and it, none of their kids play music. Yeah, or do we they don't have know. Kids? They didn't make it. Are they allowed to have kids in that well, family? Jack, I mean, Michael had two. Allegedly, you think he's. Stole him out of someone's crib, dude. Don't get me started on. Michael okay, Jackson. we won't. We won't. I have. It's uh, too hot. It's one of those people when they say you got to put the you got. It's like all the Chiefs fans still listen to that fucking Gary Glitter song after he got arrested for pedophilia and then and then got on parole and then immediately broke broke for parole broke parole with some more pedophilia shit. But oh, they'll man. still be out there going, hey! Is that and, he wrote that? Yeah, that rock and roll part too. That's Gary Glitter. Oh, yeah. Then they say the same thing about Michael Jackson. You got to look past, you got to look at the artist, not the... The art, art versus the artist. Yeah, I mean, at least Mike, George Michael was just like blowing dudes and... He was cool. We're down. Bathrooms. Yeah, we're down with that. Yeah. He was just expressing him. He like... It's unfortunate he didn't do it earlier. Yeah, it is. You know? You know? I did just watch the new documentary on him. Oh, is there a documentary? Yeah, it's, but it's nice because it's just from when they started Wham! to when it ends. Sick. Just the Wham! era. Yes, the Wham! era and about like him and his uh, best friend's friendship and how they grew up together. And I didn't realize he was Grecian. Mm, yeah, He's that would it. make sense. Yeah. The dirty Greek, huh? Well, I wouldn't say dirty. I apologize. You know, he looked very clean. He was very clean, man. You know. Where is he from? England? Yeah, they're both yeah. from English. They're English. I guess they're probably from Greece originally. Well, that's what I'm saying is he was a Grecian immigrant, and then I think his partner might have been, I forget where from. Because were those They two, were both immigrants. Were they shacked why... up together? No, no, no. He, they were just The other guy that... was straight. Okay. And which is funny, well, anyway, just Who watch the documentary. Now yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're just describing. The- <laughs> Tell me every second. I just started watching this documentary about Alex Jones and the Sandy Hook school shooting. Oh, my God. I don't want to hear it. It's pretty good. It's, I mean, it's, it's good. It's an HBO it's documentary. Upsetting. It's just like about the trial. Oh, okay. It's pretty fucked up. I've had enough trials in my life. I've been a big fan of Alex Jones since I was a kid. Well, I think he was funny at first, and then at some point he... Uh, I, I really do. I've heard him talk about it. I think he probably, when you're in a whirlwind like that, and you've been right about so many weird things, and then you... I could see how it's very easy that people... You could infiltrate... That dude could be infiltrated easily by someone who wanted to fuck with him, mm. by like giving him good information... And then one day going like, oh, we've got him finally. You think he got psyoped? Uh, I wouldn't surprise me. Dude, his uncle was like in the... he. The, there's all of these conspiracy theories that he's uh, Bill Hicks. Oh, I, yeah, I like that. And then there's like other shit where like his uncle was like in the government or his dad. Like they were alleged CIA. There's like weird shit with that dude to where it's like he could be a fucking psyop for all we know. The only conspiracy theories I believe in... Are the ones we make up about the movies. Oh, yeah. I love always trying to put all the actors in different... 
Yeah, and they're different that, movies, but yeah. link the movies link together. Link the movies together. You know, but I won't do Kevin Bacon. I just saw Kevin Bacon in a fucking movie. What was I watching? You were just watching an Instagram because he's been posting all these things with his... No, no, no. It wasn't on Instagram. With his lovely wife. The Bacon Brothers? Was it the Bacon Brothers? No, it was him and his (laughs) lovely wife on the ranch. Uh, No, it was... uh, It's this like post-apocalyptic movie that's on Netflix. Oh. Not in Um, this world. It's got Ethan Hawke in it. Running. It's got the guy from... uh, the black guy that was in the... Oh, it's called the, Running Corpse? The thir- third season of uh, uh, True Detective. He's in it. Oh. Fuck. It was a really good movie. Okay. It's odd to turn you on to it. You do... Well, I think your taste in movies are way different than mine. No, this is a really good... Okay. Like... I'm also not on the zombie trend. No, no. It's not... It's... it's Oh, they called it post-apocalyptic, but this is like another level, dude. This is like five people in this entire. There's like, what is there? One, two. I think there's eight actors in this oh. whole movie. Speaking of post-apocalyptic, have you seen the new Mad Max uh, trailer? Fuck you. <laughs> you know I've seen that trailer. You've asked me this a hundred times. <laughs> Furiosis. Furiosis. Yeah, I'm going to watch that one. Yeah, it should be okay. Just okay. Um, I have confirmation that that, uh, that late night... What the fuck is the name of that? David Desmalchin movie that just came out? The Let the Devil In or... That one where they're like the late night talk show host and they're doing the... They're trying to summon the devil or whatever. Whoa. We watched the trailer a few weeks ago. I don't know. I was kind of zoned out. Yeah, I know you were. Um, it. I heard that it's really good. Okay. So I need to check that. It might out. be too. I don't. I get scared of scary movies. The Dallas Mall trailer. But you know, like we re- tried. Thank you for trying that to get him. Who? Oh, D- D- David. David yeah. Yes. Because it's his. He's he's the lead actor in this movie. Yeah. It's not his movie. It's always weird to see him now because I worked on his movie. Yeah. Uh, All creatures below here and like would talk to him and have conversations with him yeah you know but i was like not star studded by all the people on there yeah you know like i didn't even realize that um everyone was like freaking out because the main the other the other main actor she was on doctor who and she's the blue person in the blue lady in guardians of the galaxy Oh, yeah. And so everyone was like, there's all these fanboys, and I was like, had no You're just like, chill, dude. Yeah, I just, I just, I really like that comic book that he has. Fucking awesome. Yeah, I didn't, I mean, I guess he's had his hands in so, I actually don't really know that much about him. I mostly just want to talk to him about that. (laughs) I'd probably just talk to him about comic books. I mean, that'd be awesome. Like, I saw a thing where he was talking about records, too. But what I'm like saying is I see him in all these movies and these roles. And you're and just like, oh, there's so that guy. Weird. Yeah, like I, I worked with him and then it was like, oh, he's in, you know, Ant-Man. Oh, he's in uh, the new Blade Runner. And then he's Dune, in fucking and then, Suicide Squad. And then squad. like Gotham. And I was like, oh, I guess he was a big deal. I didn't realize. I was yeah. just trying to get out of my other job. I worked on that movie for two months. That's sick. It was, it was a... I learned a lot of new things. Did anybody have a freak out on set? No, it was a pretty chill set. It was just like, I think there was a lot of um, like rubbing between locals and, and people from LA. It's like, uh, it was like, they try to big league us and do things like that. And we'd be like, hey, we don't, like, you're in our space. Yeah, see, I you can, know what I mean? Like, I don't you do can well use... with that because then I, I, I immediately go to old Tyler and I'm like, yo, uh, do you know where you are? Exactly. Like, well, that's what I you, kept... Would you like to go home? Because you could just disappear in Kansas City. <laughs> that, well, that's the thing. It was just like, hey, you know, you could be kind to us. And yeah. like, I don't, I don't think they were being rude to us, but it was just kind of like, there's some weird kind of like culture and kind of like, you know, I, I think a lot of people. Oh, I think they're all very upset since the pandemic because. Um, well, this was way before. This oh, was, was 2000. Way before. We record. 
that was 2016. Okay. Between Jul- yeah, August and September. Well, I've dealt with some of those people that, like, producers and shit mm-hmm. that, like, made that TV show when I was at that shop out in Oh, Gardner. yeah, yeah. Like, they were the worst. They were, they were, they, those people all suck. But since then, I think a lot of them are, like, like, the people that are, like, we're Hollywood. This is Hollywood. It, well, now it's, like, yeah, that's cool, but, like, uh, they can, anybody can do this anywhere. They yeah. Don't need, you don't need to be in California or. We don't or need, you know. An attitude. To be exploited anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it, I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, the, the art department was awesome. Um, the guy in charge of the art department was like my dude, he was really cool. And, uh, but yeah, it's just like. And I was also told by, I have friends who work in the industry and they were like, oh, that's like a, any small budget film is like really stressful because they don't have any money and everything's like done really fast and, and there's like never enough money to do anything. And so like, it was weird and I was like, got hired because I was the only one who could drive like a straight truck, you know, because like I was the only one who legally could drive one. Everybody else only had gay truck licenses? Well, I mean, in Kansas, weirdly, you can drive a straight truck with your regular license. Yeah, like a like a box truck? Yeah. yeah. Well, like a 40-footer. Yeah. Yeah. But in Missouri, you have to get a special yeah. add-on to your license. Yeah. So it, it was like I had a Kansas driver's license and knew how to drive one. Yeah, as long as it doesn't have air brakes, we can oh, operate... Oh, it had air brakes. Uh, then you needed a... No, you have the... No, anything with air brakes requires a, uh, I believe, it requires a CDL in Kansas. Huh. You can drive it as long as it doesn't. But well, didn't have air brakes then. I think that's the rule. We'll have to look that up. I'd be curious to know the answer to that. From what I understood, because there's like, because it's like it's weird. Because you have to get an air brake endorsement when you get a CDL. Well, I don't know. We, well, all I know is I wasn't breaking the law. All I know is Anton was illegally driving 40 footers. I've never done straight, anything. He was illegally driving straight trucks. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. And r- ramping. No. Ramping it. Just ramping it off. Uh, ramp. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, that's what I. I mean, people always want me to move my business to Missouri for some weird reason. And I'm like, what are you talking about because you, know? you would have to have a license probably to drive no you could drive your sprinter you over could there. but it's like it's like i gotta get everything expect, inspected all the time yeah it's no, like a total Missouri, scam dude. it's a scam and like you it's know for the environment no it's not nobody's people pay like 50 dollars and they're just like yep yeah you sign your thing 50 i gotta, gotta do it for 20 bucks yeah i mean whatever if you're smart about it yeah know? but like but yeah I, i'm I don't know. What's funny is when I started my business, again, we're talking about taxes. Um, it's uh, Welcome back to the tax podcast. They had no income tax for businesses when I started my business for like the first two years. Oh, in Missouri or Kansas? In Kansas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I paid yeah, yeah. like nothing on my income. Yeah, they had that thing where for a couple of years it was, that was like, that was, that's when the state almost went bankrupt. Yeah, because it was of a that. terrible idea. Because they were like, anyone that has an LLC. yeah. Then I, pay I, taxes. I remember I was working for guys like everybody start LLCs and I'll pay you 1090 or I'll pay you. Yeah. Well, you can invoice me. Yeah. And I was like, what? He's like, you don't have to pay fucking taxes. Yeah. It was crazy for my first two years of my business. I like paid no taxes. Yeah. It was wild. It's like, yeah, I think, mean, I don't know. It was, it was wild. And then obviously it was terrible. I did not agree yeah. with it, but, but I was, you know, I'm going to yeah. take advantage. Is you were on sex new, worker status. I know. You know, it's like, but at least they recognize it. Yeah. You're like fucking server status. What? Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, servers, they never, they make I guess it's probably different or... now, like, because they get a lot of credit card tips. But back in the day, whenever they'd bitch, I'd be like, shut up. You get tax free oh, money every day, cash. I had friends who were like, yeah, I just work four hours and make like 500 bucks. And then, yeah. You know, and then I do that like three, three days a week. And yeah. Make more than most people, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> all in cash. All yeah, all in cash, like all under the table, you know. But like let's talk about your business. Oh yeah. 
What, are, um, what do you want to know? It's like the weirdest niche business. It is weird. Well, I mean, just like explain what it For is. For those who don't know how I make my money. What do you, does your, what's your LLC called? It's called Dionry Fine Arts Services. Oh, <laughs> LLC, <laughs> LLC <laughs> <laughs> is the whole thing. Uh, but yes, I'm what is called an art prepared whore. It's T O R at the end, not E R. But uh, art handler or a picture hanger is what I tell most people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm a privateer. I don't work for a museum, so I'm not really an art prepared whore. I'm an art handler. That's what and, you would be if you worked at like the Nelson, right? Yeah. So, but like, also you wouldn't make any fucking money probably doing that. Uh, I mean, there's trade offs. Like, I obviously I wouldn't have to pay for my own health care, and uh, they'd have their own retirement. But it's, it's, I mean, basically what the risk is is that like I have to insure myself. Right. I have to, which like the insurance in this business is. Um, you know, it's important. I move very expensive things, but it's also why I get paid to do it because I know how to right. not break things. Uh, and because you're insured. And I'm insured. So it's like, it's a lot of that, but it's, it's like, um, but yeah, so basically I hang stuff on people's walls. I'm a glorified carpenter, but I move, it's like transportation of art installation of art uh, i can do framing i can do creating and and shipping uh but i generally pass those off to other guys who like pretty much all they do is that and they pass off installation to me because i mostly do installation and transportation but uh that's what i do i just move and hang art so yeah do you have to like promote it or is it just so Word of mouth that like you usually always have stuff to do. I mean, it's basically it's like a luxury item. Yeah, is how I view it. It's, so when I moved here, I started in framing at a framing shop, and the first thing they said was they're a luxury item business essentially, because like if you think about it, what had happened is when I got out of college, it was like right, like right as we were somewhat leveling out after the housing crisis. And the place I worked at was like, man, we got hit hard because like we're even below art because you have to first buy art and then decide to frame it. Yeah. So they got hit really hard. And then um What frame shop did you work at? Uh Art and Frame Warehouse out on Medcalf. They're very good. I recommend them to a lot of people. Yeah, they're right. Is that the place that's in front of Micro Center? Yeah. Yeah, they've been there for fucking ever. They've been there a long time. Um, that's the original location, and it's the yeah, they uh, they're still in that shopping center, but they've moved over to a little bit of a different area. But they're still there. They're very good if you live around there. Um, but I that's where I learned to frame, and then yeah, I got into the biz of art handling, and then went solo in 2016 so i worked on that movie and then started up my business so that was kind of like that's you your know, way away from the last guy you were yeah for. so i worked on the movie and then at night i'd go home and like what did i have to do to start a business research all that stuff and uh but it was like a good because i'd work 12 hour days and then like technically only work for it i didn't forget it anyway it would, but i had time to like figure out what i needed to do and then, yeah, basically, I, you don't really promote because, like, because it's a niche business and it's basically people in the know for the most part. Um, you just get a name for being uh, good yeah, at it yeah. and being careful and being communicative because it's a lot of talking to people and giving their options. Because I think the important thing that I think about, and I learned this from framing too, is like, but, you know, when you do framing or you do this job, like people come in and like they don't know what their options are. They don't know what their service, what services are provided or they don't know anything about the industry. So a lot of what I do is just talk them through what their options are, you know. Yeah. And that's that's the main thing is like I just I'm always just really honest and I'm like, we can do this or that. But these are the down, you know, it's always downfalls and pros, but it's a good business and. I see a lot of art in it. 
feels good when like you get a degree in art and like every professor's like 95% of you won't even work in the art industry when you get out of here. And so you're like, I'm the one of the 5%. Yeah. Same thing at the, you know, I went to school to do body work Mm -hmm. and I'm the only person that I kept in contact with from Wyoming when I went to school that no, I'm like one of like two or three that even went into the field. And I'm the only one mm-hmm. that like was like, I'm going to build like when I went there, I was like, I'm going to build those cars. And they're like, well, yeah, well, you'll probably be doing collision work dog, to make money. I'm like, no, no, I'll figure it out. I'll work on old cars. And I have, but I mean, I know a lot of them joined unions. Oh, and just and do went, body work. Yeah. no, Went and became like fucking. I know a guy, one of my roommate, he was a sheetrock hanger in St. Louis. I ended up rooming up and like they had these like weird dorms. Like, so I had this weird experience where I like went to Wyoming having never been there, Mm -hmm. just never left the state by myself. Like, never to Missouri. Right, but I mean, I never left the metro, yeah, really. Yeah, I yeah. went to, like, Lawrence at Topeka, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I never ventured out. I wasn't, like, a traveler. Yeah. Like, I was just, like, I, I was you. oblivious to the world, right? I feel you. So, like, I just get in my car one day and load it up. It's like, okay, well, I guess I go. And I was just, like, terrifyingly driving to, like, Wyoming to be like, fuck, what is this like? Weird, you know? Then I go to Wyoming, and I... You know, I'm in this place that's like I. There's other options of places I could have went, like uh-huh. California or like another school in Texas. Like I should have went to one of those. You know what I mean? Like what spoke about Wyoming? Uh, Open it, it, plains. No, it was just like I don't know. I don't know why it was just like okay, well I'll go to that one. That's the original one. It must be the best one. Oh really? Yeah. And so I went up there, and uh, that's where I met my kid's mom at was when I was in college, but I walk, I went there and then there was like just a bed, two beds and like a bed. It's like a two bedroom apartment, but the rooms had two beds in them. These are the dorms, the dorms. These are like the biotech dorms. And so like two, the two kids in the other room were like, one was a Mormon from Utah. Mm -hmm. The other one was a kid from St. Louis. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so me and him knew a lot of the same stuff. Right. And then my roommate was some ex army dude from like Vermont. And like, I woke up one night to this dude having like a PTSD episode where he's like, Lee, over time, he's like, I'll fucking kill you. I'm like, what? And the next day, I was just like, yeah, I got to get out of that room, man. (laughs) Like, he needs his own room. I found my own, I, I got some money and I found my own like apartment to live in and like got out of the dorms. I was like, this is not for me. Dude. Is it like anything like the, <clears throat> the the American college life? Or is it just like you go? It's nothing like that. It was eight hours a day of like work, like study and work. I constantly got, I was older. I was like 22. Oh, okay. So like I'm in there with all these 18 year old dipshits and they were like constantly like somebody always was complaining about me to like one of the fucking instructors being like, oh, can you believe what this guy said? It's like, dude, I go to the fucking bar at night and like, right. Do wild shit. Like you go to the party. This I'll like, no, I'm not coming to party with you. 18 year olds. Like <laughs> I'm cool, dude. I just like, wasn't like, I was way, way rockabilly. Like I had a big old pompadour and I was way in the cars. Like I didn't give a fuck. Like there are a bunch of those. There's like guys and girls in that class, mm-hmm. all different kinds of people. And most of them were just there because their parents were like, you got to go to some kind of college. Well, I think that's like the, the reason why you make it or you don't is like, if you don't yeah. have a passion for it, you know, it's like you get out and then you're like, Oh, it's actually like work. Like that's kind of the dirge of like, Uh, art college is like freshman year you get all these kids you like don't know i don't know what i want to do and then their parents like well you have to go to college and then they're like well i like drawing pictures and then they get there and they're like oh wow this is actually like has this is like an academic level Um, of drawing pictures and and like you actually have to try and there's at you know like study and 
no history and and like uh, also there's n- barely any future in it. Yeah, you know, like yeah, it's like a lot of luck, right? Right. Like, like if I didn't grow up doing carpentry, right? You know, I wouldn't have this job because it's a lot of it's like, you know, I know how a wall's built. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, it's a plaster wall. Oh, it's a drywall wall. And then I have to yeah. do different things. And then I'm like, oh, okay, this frame. No one put any hardware on this frame. How to hang it? So yeah. Now, like I know how to do all. You know. Right. It's just. Silly little things like that, but yeah, it's like if you if you didn't have that background of like rebuilding houses that I did when I was a kid, it's like you, you wouldn't know, be fucking, you wouldn't be in you'd it. You'd be working at Target. Oh, I don't know what I'd be doing. I don't know. Probably serving. Probably. You know. You'd probably be an art teacher at like a grade school. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I would have actually gone for a master it and then you know. I was going for a master and didn't get in, and it's like the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Yeah, because you're like, fuck it. Because now you just do art. You do art. Yeah, I mean, I do art and have shows, and, you know, a lot of my peers who have master it's like I'm showing with them, or, you know, it's yeah, like... I mean, like we talked about, like, when I was like, oh, I had to get a bunch of helmets to paint, and we were like, we could probably get that in somewhere. It's like, yeah, yeah, And here sure. I am, some dude that barely graduated high school. You know? Well, I mean, like... <laughs> The art, I mean, why I love the arts is they're subjective. Yeah. And then it's like, sure, you can have an academic background in it and it's fine. And I, I obviously like talking about art in an academic way, but it's like, I still appreciate a lot of like quote unquote outsider art, which is obviously that terms. And then I hear I'm being academic again. Yeah. Obviously, that term's going out of style. But like, if you go to Milwaukee, they have a giant, most of the museum is like folk art or like right. uh, the Garden of Eden in Kansas. Like I had to study that in college and that was just like a Civil War vet that moved to the middle of Kansas and then started making sculptures out of concrete. Yeah. You know, and like that shit's tight. This is hot. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. Well, it's just like all this. Like I'm sure there's some people who are like, well, you can't light like that. And that's not the proper thing and it's like well i just yeah i'm just winging it here i don't know what i'm doing i'm just like right. i got a camera and then i got some other stuff and then i got some more stuff after that and but i think that's the most interesting stuff sometimes you know what i mean yeah. because like like uh also sheboygan has a really crazy art center because Coles is there yeah and uh sheboygan so illinois yeah and so they throw all this money into this this art center but it's the art center again is like a huge folk art i mean they have they have like folk art like a pakistani guy's folk art like just like bought his whole whatever yard that he made and brought it over here they have like some woman that lived in a hotel room for 50 years in new york and they bought three of her four walls and moved it in there like they bought a guy who had like a shed and he lined the whole thing with like light bulbs and they bought that and brought it you know and wired it up so it's like a really cool center, but you know, like part of what's so cool about it is when you come from an academic background, it's really interesting to see people who who approach it from just like left field and their like notion of like what is art to them and and like the reasoning behind it, you know, and so because that's always like what I mean, as we know in like musical genres, right? It's yeah. Like, it's like each genre like has a different goal with their music and then that shapes why it sounds the way it shapes or whatever. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just like out in some tangent now. I don't know how to bring it back. You're on some like art. I'm on some art fucking art snob tangent. No. Yeah. I mean, art is subjective. That's it. The music is subjective. Everything's subjective. Yeah. And I think for me, it's like, uh, is the person behind it have passion? Right. Like my favorite guy right now is he's total like he's calls himself. I mean, he wouldn't have referred to himself like this, but he's getting pretty popular. But he he now refers to himself as outsider music. But his it's his he goes by God's computer, and it's awesome. Like I knew this guy, and he started showing up to the shows, and he was like, "Hey, like I don't know anything about music, but I want to start a band." And so 
he went on Reddit. Whoa. And he just found people to write him music. And then he puts lyrics over it. And it's just like, I, my, my former bandmate was like, he's like, hey, I went and saw him. It's amazing. I I don't even, he's like, do not listen to any of his recordings because I just want you to see it live. Yeah. And I went to it live and I had, I've never had this in a long, my whole experience, but like I had just a fucking ear to ear grin on my face. Yeah. Because it was just so honest, like in, in any way of like what we say, like what popular, you know, like what people like about music, it was just like so different. His lyrics are just so like interesting. It's like yeah. mainly about his singing, you know. I don't know. And then he's like, I've really come to be be friends with him, and he's like, now he's got this whole persona, and it's all about like how he's the best artist in the world. Oh, and nice. He just, he's, he's just like super... kayfabe wrestling it. Yeah, he's like K. He's just like when you meet him in real life, he's just so humble and kind. But then he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm the best. Like I'm blah blah blah. You know, it's yeah. like it's just. And you know my degrees in performance, performance and installation art. So yeah. it's like I like I just so get what he's doing. I'm like, oh my god! And then and he like, has no idea that that he's doing it. I think he does a little bit. Like he's talked to me a little bit about it, but but he's just like I don't know. It's just like so inspiring to me to see this dude who's like I don't know anything about music. I just want to be creative. Like he just shows up at these shows, you know, yeah. and he's. And like approaches us and he knows that we're musicians. And then he's like, and now he's like got more shows than any of us. Yeah. Because like the best part of a show is he shows up with a laptop, plugs it in, presses play, and then like does his music things over. Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't know. It's just so. And every, I think like at first every, people are turned off because they're like, what is this shit? But then once they realize like it's so sincere and so fun. Like I've just watched the audience like turn, you know, like turn into fans within like by the third song. Cause That's they're sick. like, Oh, this guy's like, he, you know, they, they finally get in on the joke. So yeah, God's computer. God's computer. Recommend. If you can go to a show, which they're all, everywhere all the time. Yeah. Go to a, yeah. God computer show. Recommended. Highly so, recommended. Well, let's talk about your band. My band, the distant now. Um, how deep? How deep? Yeah. Is is your love? No, the name. Oh, really deep. I guess I don't know. Uh, Seems pretty deep. Yeah, I'm pretentious. Is that what you <laughs> meant to say? <laughs> 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 well, we are. No. Um. Yeah. I mean, we're an artsy band, I guess. Yeah. For we're a duo now, and. uh but we're just a duo now? We're a duo. We call ourselves Crappy Steely Dan. Yeah. Because we're like... I didn't realize it was just the two of you now. We're just the two of us, and we're releasing a single April 2nd. I think that's Tuesday. Yeah. First Tuesday of April. April 2nd, and it's uh, we're calling it the Dime Variations. But basically, <clears throat> we wrote an uh, actual live soul song. And recorded it to sound like it was live in a club. And then we took that song and sampled it and turned it into another different song. So it's one's a reflection of the other. But we're releasing yeah. that as like a double or whatever you want to call yeah. it. Double single. It was back in the day we'd have an A and B side. But, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, so they relate to each other. And then we have a visualizer that will be on uh, YouTube. So I, I always take the album cover and you love put it into visualizer. motion. I don't know. I feel like I mean I'm a visual artist. I know. It just I've never heard that technical term until you said it. So well, it's like, I still like it to from... me. It's like oh, I made a yeah. We got a video coming out. <laughs> like, well, I, I like to call it like I think I stole it from Winamp. Yeah. Remember when you were like oh, yeah the Winamp yeah because <laughs> you'd be like Winamp, twelve and you'd be like fucking Winamp rule. Dude, let's let's put still... on. I'm looking to see if Winamp is still available for. for it was like the best one though. It was. And you could get different, like, uh, but anyway, I like to take the album cover and put it into motion. And, yeah. And it's kind of like, but we're going to eventually, hopefully, have like a screening. I'm hoping somewhere, some local venue, we'll just do a little back to back of the our first album. 
What Not Is Death. Out now. Yeah, out available. I mean, if you really want a CD, you can come on take compact one from disc. me. Yeah, yeah. Or you can just listen to it on Spotify. Yeah, you can just, or YouTube, or because you can watch the visualizer on YouTube. Yeah, visualize it on YouTube. Because I certainly spent enough time trying to replicate this building from the one on uh, Shawnee Mission Drive. Yeah. Or Johnson Drive. Between Johnson Drive this, and Shawnee. When did this one come out? So that came out in July last year. He brought an empty case, you guys. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look at the CD in there, it has, a little surprise on the the building's not there. Oh shit! Wow, I'm really <laughs> I'm really witty. But yeah, that's the. So when I first moved here, I'd I'd have to drive out to Medcalf, and I'd always go by that. That weird building. Yeah, it was, it was like a half built um parking garage. Parking garage. And then like I don't know, over the years I just became fascinated with the shape, you know? Especially like moving around it. Well, wasn't this in where was that at? It's the between Shawnee Mission and Johnson Drive, that little Yeah, like, right v. there on, on Row. Yes. Yeah, but that's Row where turns the mall into eighteen. Yeah. That was part of the mall. Why didn't they tear the whole thing? I don't know. I've heard I don't so know. many crazy. It just went into bankruptcy again this year. Yeah. You know. I think they started building that after they tore the mall down. They started rebuilding another mall. Yeah, it was and then that yeah, it's I don't know. Which I don't know why they tore that mall down. That mall rule. Why oh I don't know. I it must be way before my time. I think that was was that Medcalf North? Yeah, but it's not on Medcalf. I know. But they just called it that. Yeah, because then there was Medcalf South that was down by like 95th Street. Yeah, I don't know. I'm always just fascinated by Johnson Drive. I'm a big, I love, I was a big mall guy. Because you were, you were a 90s kid. Yeah. You are like, a mall rat. Yeah, I was a mall rat. Nice. Me and my homie Randy were just talking about how much time we spent at Oak Park Mall's kids. Did you ever get at least one Cherry Slurpee? I don't know, maybe. Oh, well, when maybe you weren't that serious guy. about mauling. I don't, probably, I mean, <clears throat> we played, we go to the arcade, oh, okay, there's that's an arcade classic. there, then we just walk around, never, I don't think, I don't even know if I ever picked a chick up at the mall. You never asked one girl out? At the mall? Yeah. No. <clears throat> I don't think so. The things we should I was kind done. of a dork when I was like super fat and awkward when I was. A teenager. And I was into punk rock at a time when it wasn't cool. Well, where you lived. Yeah. In Lawrence, it was... Well, I know. I hung out in Lawrence all the time. I was cool in Lawrence, but in Bonner, it's just like, no. why, why don't I even try? Why aren't you wearing a cowboy hat? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. So that's where the cover comes from. But Sick. that's just four, uh, four songs. We call what it an a... EP? Yeah, we call it a suite. A suite. A suite of four songs. S U I T E. S U I T E. Yeah, yeah. Sick. We try. We're trying to use like all classical terms. I would call it a suite, like W or S W E E T. Sweet. <laughs> we'll make a dance album and we'll call it a suite. Then. <laughs> yeah. You That'd know? be pretty good. But yeah, so doing that and making art, making paintings. 3D. We're going to 3D print you something here eventually. Yeah, we need, I need lots of 3D printing. And then, I don't know if you saw this. I saw your sticker that you told me about a bunch. Oh. No, I, I redesigned stickers. the Kansas flag. Yeah. So, these are all for you. Originally, now when you, is this the one that you said originally you had it, but it had like the stars and bars behind it? When I had, not the stars and bars. <laughs> Come on, I'm from Lawrence, man. <laughs> This that's not what you had on there. Ugh. These are that that does look classier. What? That then? Then the flag now. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, they just took the seal and then put it on the flag and then put it up forty feet and they're like, oh, no one can tell what that is. Let's put Kansas across it really big. Yeah. You know, and you're like, wow, that's a great flag when you have to put and your I name like on you're it. Just like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do all that. Just yeah, straight. I line. was like, dude, we're missing a. a Golden opportunity to just cut the corner off. Yeah. You know, it's not that much work to do. So, or you have to do the flag that we're like, instead of making the flag a square, 
that it's the state, you know what I mean? You just are the rectangle. You just cut the actual flag off right there. You know what I mean? Oh, like every, like instead of it being a rectangle, it just. But that's what that's my idea. Yeah. yeah. Is that the actual flag will not have its top yeah. corner? So these are lovely. Doing that, those are free. If you can't run into me, if you can see me, I have a stack. Those are ten. There's ten here. So you know the. You big, could be a lucky winner. Ooh, maybe I'll take these to Torque Fest with me. Oh yeah, are they all Kansas boys? No, they're in Iowa. So okay, they'll fucking hate but it. Kansans always get along with Iowa. Yeah, but I'll just put them on their cars without them knowing. Yeah. Well, they're gonna really hate it because those are both waterproof. Uh, now, and Nico, if, Nico, if you're watching, we need to steal this logo and put a Black Magic TV on it. Ooh, <laughs> steal your art. <laughs> I'll send you the files. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to just like get anyone. To use it. But yeah, yeah, I get people... I have a website, newkansasflag.com, but... Nice. I get emails all the time that people are like, oh boy. You know, so I'll mail them a couple stickers. But they're always like out of state. So I'm like... How do we petition this? How do we get this going? My goal is to uh, just grassroots it. That's what I'm saying. I think if... Because here's the deal. This is how I'm doing it. I'm not copywriting anything. It's all copyright free. So like if you want a, a, a JPEG, a PNG, whatever you want, I'll send it to you. You can just like go to the website, email me. I'll give you, you can make t-shirts, you can make your own flag. I don't care. Like my whole thing is like if just enough people use it and it just becomes the default flag, it'll just turn into the real flag. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then my goal is just to like, let's have a cool flag, man. Yeah. Like we have a really... Have you talked to anyone at the state? I I one time posted on uh why did I just forget our governor's name? Uh Fuck, I don't know what the Oh governor. Kelly. I once posted on uh, our our governor's uh Facebook and then she liked it. But that was about But I kind of don't want to admit, I'm worried it will get politicized. You know what I mean? Like I don't well, want... dude, like if we put the trans flag on the background, oh no, we it we it would be we it would be guaranteed. No, no, <laughs> dude, there was a. I'm pretty big on like just speaking of flags. There's something down the street that they have American flag, mm-hmm. but the stars and bars are rainbow colored. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's... it's a Jasper Johns reference. What the fuck is that? Uh, Jasper Johns was an artist in the 1960s that painted American flags, but all different wild colors. No, I. This is definitely supposed to be like the gay pride flag, but an American flag. Hell yeah. Uh, but I I don't like that. You just want the regular colors. I just I like you uh, want you want one that's all black except one blue stripe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want one <laughs> blue line. No, I fucking hate that just as much. Yeah, yeah. I hate all of it. The weird one I for hate, me. I hate modifying like I don't like modifying the flag. So you'd hate Jasper John's series? I probably would. I don't like modifying the American flag. I think it takes away from like I don't know. I got what, like a what's thing. What's your name that sewed it? Yeah, whatever fucking that old bitch's name was. But like uh <laughs> I fu- it fucks me up, dude. It fucks me up when like it's like a bad thing. To have the American, like... Oh, like it's becoming a hate symbol in a weird yeah, way? And it's, yeah, and it's not. It's fucking bullshit. It's like, that's the thing that, like, literally was for people from all over. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then you're going to like, you don't have to make everything fucking gay, dude. Like, you don't mm-hmm. have to make it the... You don't have to... If you want to have an American... It's like that person, it makes me wonder, like, would you just want... Do you just want a regular flag? But you feel like you gotta have. But what if it's doubled up? You got a regular one and a fancy one. Then dude, that's fine, I guess. But I well, if you're gonna have the just have the gay pride flag and an American flag. Yeah, but it's like we're all about mashups. No, no, it seems like it takes away from both of the flags. I don't know. It's subjective. People are going to call me a hate monger for saying that. Uh oh. I just, I get just as mad when I see motherfuckers rocking like, dude, you come rolling down the street with a 20 foot long Mexican flag hanging off the back of your truck. And I'm just going, dude, if you love, 
if you love Mexico, it's like this thing, it wouldn't matter where it is, right? Like, if you love that so much, then why the fuck are you here? <laughs> like, I don't understand that. I don't get it. It's like, I wouldn't expect to go to like Australia and just run into some fucking expat who's driving a giant truck with just a 50 foot fucking American flag blown off the well, back. Well, I think up. it's like the, that's the weird thing about America is we're like the only country that really like rocks our, our like heritage, you know? Like I don't you, know. Yeah. I, like other countries find that weird about it, especially, especially if you're like, I am part German, part you know, this, yeah. like Europeans are like, what's the difference? So I don't know. It's That's why I tell thing. people I'm fucking Southern North American, baby. Southern North. Yeah. Aren't you Midwestern? No, we're from South, South Missouri. Oh, you are originally? Yeah. Brumley, Missouri. That's oh. where my family's from. Huh? North or South Carolina before that. Hmm. Then Scotland. Brumley. Yeah, yeah. Then Scotland. Yeah. But. The one weird flag I saw locally, it's like says peace and love all over it, which I'm all about as a hippie. But then it's like they have a peace sign, but it's not a peace sign. It's a Chevron sign because they didn't add the third leg. Sick. And I'm always like, what? They love gasoline, dude. They're on that know. Mad Max shit like me. Oh, yeah. So did you know that there's a new trailer coming out for the Oh, movie? is there a new Mad Max movie? <laughs> shit. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm working on the... I mean, I'm wor working on, I have those, and then, yeah, just making 3D printed sculptures. Yeah, your sculptures are, I like the, the wrestling, like, the, the ones wrestlers. that you have, yeah, the one, the, all that shit you had at your house was sick. Yeah, so that, I, I'm kind of like moving to the next phase of that, and then uh, trying to get back into making watercolors. I mean, I did those AI hand series kind of as like a starting off but uh but yeah water because it was kind of my main thing that because i've been doing it since i was like five or something long time so i just being creative i've been i've been getting lots of arguments with people about ai art yeah i i find it funny it's like it's like the uh, same people that tell me a man can be a lady. They also tell me that AI art isn't real art. I'm like, what, what do you mean, man? Like, <laughs> well, it's weird. It's like there is a long history of like machine made art. Like it's mm -hmm. it's especially like again, I'm gonna go on a history tangent. Uh, but yeah, I mean, after probably even before World War One, there was like art machines people were trying to make to like make art for you. So I just see it's like biograph. Yeah, things like that, where you literally just like hook up something to an engine and it goes like. What that. about the guys that like tie the paint can to the rope, poke a hole in the bottom of it, and then they throw it in a circle and let it go, and then stop it, and then do it again? They're, that's yeah. They're not really creating anything. Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of like they're operating a piece of equipment. Yeah, it's like a process too, you yeah. know. And so, which is you know can be an art form too, is the pro is process, but. It's like, I don't know. For me, it's exciting. Like, my next series is generating AI images and then painting them. Yeah. Because I, I work a lot with copyright. Like, I had a series where I made six paintings. No one's ever seen them. I took no photos of them. I'm never going to sell them. I'm only selling the copyrights to them. So, like, it defeats the purpose of the copyright. So, I, I really like the concept of copyright. But... What's cool is you can't copyright AI images. Right. So, but I can create AI images and then paint them and then they are copyrightable. Yeah. Right. But then like, they're never going to be true copies. You know what I mean? So, uh, so yeah, I, I just find like, it's like the same thing with 3D printing. It's like, weirdly in the arts, it hasn't been explored enough. So yeah. like, I think because the problem is, is like, you kind of have this weird gap where like people who are good at 3d printing and technology, like aren't like real conceptual people. Right. So they're like, look at this crazy difficult vase I printed. Yeah. And with like an iridescent filament that looks different from this angle from that. And then there's other people who are like, I'm too intimidated by the technology. It's going to be so hard, even though it's really actually surprisingly easy. Yeah. And so like, I'm kind of like one of the few people like 
investigating that. Yeah, it's like, what is that? Like, that's why I did the three. Like, I remember driving home and listening to NPR. This is like 2014. They were like, they're trying to ban 3D printed guns. And I immediately was like, I want to print one of those just because it's like, it's such an interesting issue of First Amendment rights. Yeah. That's what really like a lot of people don't understand is like, it's a file. And what's the difference between a file and a book? So can we ban a book? Can we ban a file? Right. You know, so it's like, and when you when you phrase it like that, people are like, really, it kind of blows their mind about the whole thing because it's like, obviously ghost guns are really scary and stupid and could be really dangerous and they're just going to get better. And, but also, they're kind of tight. Well, yeah, I mean, they're like an interesting thing. I get, but I get why people are into just three D printed guns. Yeah, but like for me, it's more like it's a Nerf gun that shoots real bullets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which is that's the scary part of it. But then to me, it's more like this issue of like uh, public safety to like speech, you know. And then being in the arts, like it's always interesting to be about speech. But yeah, that's why I did the. 3D printed gun sculptures, or then I painted them up like Pokemon because they're like Pokemon means pocket monster, which could be like another name for a handgun or a penis. Yeah, definitely, or both. But then it's like also saying like people are treating guns as toys, you know, which is like something I totally disagree with as like a Boy Scout, you know. So, uh, but yeah, I like to explore like. What is the moral concept of 3D printers, mm. you know, or any technology? Because I think they talk about like sometimes that's the artist's job. I feel like I'm boring you with all this like academic talk. Not at all. But uh, they they talk about like that's what, kind of, a, what a subtle way to call me a moron. Whatever. I feel like you're not up to snuff with me on my academia. Well, uh, now that you put it that way. I feel terrible. <laughs> don't. Yeah, I'm getting Because I'm truly a dummy, and I don't know what most of these I'm words mean. I, I, I'm a, I garner a different kind of intelligence. You mean like practical rather than? Yeah, like street street knowledge. Rather than just stringing a bunch of words you don't understand together on a podcast to look smart to your peers. Yeah. No, I do that every week. I don't even know what the word the means. I don't either. What did, what did Bill Clinton say? It's your de- what and <laughs> what your definition of what what means or something? Do you not remember this? No, it's like the greatest legal argument of all time, where you're debating like what the definition of like a. Oh, I tell people like all the time. I'm like, oh, what is right? Oh. W r i t g h. Well, what is it? Who's right? Right, right, right. Well, that's the thing with like... What is it? Do they sell it at a store? Can I buy it? Is it a real thing? It's just in the ether. Because I don't think Adolf Hitler... And then I always look at people and go, do you think Hitler thought he was wrong? And they go... And I go, I don't think anybody thinks they're wrong. But is anybody right? Well, that's always the argument in D&D about uh, lawful evil. Yeah. Because we're it's like... Lawful evil people think they're <clears throat> doing the right thing. Yeah. But it's like they're actually doing really terrible yeah. things. But yeah, so I like to explore that a lot with technology because I think part of it's like if you talk to a lot of people who create technology, they don't really want to think about the implications of what they're making. They're just right. like they're just like this, I want to make this, this is cool. And I a lot of times it's artists that come in and then are like hey did you ever think like this could go wrong this could go wrong. that's like the whole basis of sci-fi yeah you know is like people conjecturing. they're mad sci- they're the mad scientists yeah they're the ones who are like yeah we could do that but like this, you know this well it's could just no different than like the car world you know you take a guy like me or any of my various friends and it's like well could we take what if we took the motor out of this brand new truck and put it in this really small old car. <laughs> what would happen? What if we took a motor and we put one motor on each wheel? I've done it. I know. I figured. Yeah. But... There's a crazy shit, dude. There's all kinds of crazy shit. Like, 
Like I've what if we made put building a twin tur I have friends with like crazy like I got a buddy with a turbocharged Miata. I got another buddy <clears> building a twin turbo V eight to go in a Mustang. Like these are these are cars that like you you could run I've always had this dream of building like basically like a NASCAR car, but like a road course car for the strict purpose of just like running from the cops in it. <laughs> like what could we build? That was just the, the ultimate, like, wouldn't it have to be an electric vehicle though. No, no, you wouldn't want an electric vehicle. We'd run out a of gasoline juice. engine. Yeah. Fucking, I don't know. I'm not, I, I, I don't think electric commuter vehicles are good. practical yet. Practical. I don't think they ever will be. I think the the even if they get the salt battery or whatever going, if they get the salt rock. If if, you, if these get this goddamn salt rock battery <laughs> company would take off, <laughs> just like cold fusion. Yeah, but uh, no, like I when I was at this truck shop in the bottoms, like this like the sandblaster, I was working there doing body work and shit for him. But a couple of years ago, there was a company that made like you know like the lot hopping trucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you, like, the, like the little, yeah. So they're basically like that truck's purpose is to move trailers from loading dock door to loading dock door and shit. And they made those electric. Mm -hmm. And that is like a very practical use for that because that's essentially a giant forklift. Mm -hmm. Right? So a company could have three of these things that ran all day. They had like a 12 hour battery life on them or something like they were crazy. Oh, wow. They had a crazy battery life on them because um, they're tiny, but it was mostly battery. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Because they don't need to go fast either. Right. So they needed torque over over speed. And so um, a company could have several of these things and they would plug in like fucking forklifts and imagine the amount of diesel fuel you would save a year. Right. Just in that. Right. But like. You know, I hear all these people argue about all kinds of shit when it comes to electric vehicles, the emissions that it takes to create the batteries, the fact that there's like car dumps and yeah, there's like dumps full of electric vehicles because at a certain point they just become throwaway. They're like Walkmans. You know what I mean? It's like a television like, well, it's cost more to fix it than it does to replace it. So we'll just throw it away. You know what I'm going to mention, though? What? Flintstone car. Flintstone car. You know, like, I, you're back to it. I let's Always. do it. We could. I mean, I drove an electric car when I was four. A power wheel? Yeah, remember those? Pow, pow, power wheels. The Jeeps. Yeah. And then I would run it into things, and it would literally throw me. That's out how I know you were privileged. There's a there's a lot of things that show that off. <laughs> <laughs> the art degree. <laughs> Yeah, the art degree and then being able to start an art business. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, your art business, I think you were just at a right place at a right time. And like you said, if you, if you just very... also have a, like a different probably skill set than most people that went into an art degree, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's a weird, yeah, it's just like a, practical skill or whatever like yeah if i had to i mean i could just go into like framing houses and i'd be fine you yeah know what i mean it wouldn't be like my dream job but like right you know you I, could have just easily it. been in a carpenter's union yeah you yeah. know so it's like i'd probably rather do like fine woodwork or whatever yeah but uh you'd be like one of those edgings. dudes like like hand planing everything no you know, like, i hate that stuff yeah you'd be out there restoring old houses i do do that yeah i mean i've done it with three houses now but yeah but uh yeah so anyway that's all the dumb stuff i do and write make music make art yeah and occasionally wizard it up and wizard it up hopefully someday we may achieve the D. &D. yeah we are gonna achieve the D, &D and then we got. We you said we got a pizza sponsor for that one. Yeah, we got a pizza sponsor, and then we got uh, the arm wrestling thing. Oh at yeah, some point we gotta have that. We gotta get that banner made that Adam threw such a fucking fit about that night. Oh, dude. 
He, he went Dude, the such fit, a, the fit that he threw at us, and like the conversation that ensued for twenty minutes after you got off the internet <laughs> that day, me being like, "Dude, I don't care. It's an arm wrestling tournament. Just make a flyer." And then to for at the end of it, weeks later, for him to be like, "Well, now we can get a banner." And it's like, "Who the fuck said anything about a banner, dude?" Dude, it'd be even better if we get a like uh, a sign on the side of the highway. What do they call those? A oh, billboard. A billboard? We get yeah. a billboard. I just like fucking saying the wrong thing about resolution to Adam, because <laughs> he's just like. As as the dork that you are in like fine art stuff, mm-hmm. Adam is that dork about graphic design. So it's like this is not enough DPI. He's like that's not even the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. Okay. <laughs> that stuff gets so. Uh, there's so much. Dude, there's so standards. much with this computer shit. Like even me. Like what you're describing is just what I like. I'm the the dude that's like, oh, I want to make that. That's cool. Well, it's funny too. It's like. So like the album cover that's coming out for the dime variations is like I literally took a dime and stood it on in and then like um shot light on it to create two shadows and just shot, shot a, a photograph on top and like I don't know that much about photography I'm not very good and then I just like use the same camera take a crappy really crappy video and then I just made it look like VHS for the visualizer but I sent like some images to my friend and he was like, Oh, how'd you like CGI that? And I was like, yeah. no, no, no. I just took like, I just filmed it. It's all on filmed. And he's like, yeah, but like the lights that are going over it, how'd you CGI it? And I was like, no, it's all in camera. And then finally I had to send him a rig, like the setup of the rig. And yeah. he was like, Oh, it's all in camera. And I'm like, yes, that's what I was. Yeah. I'm telling you, that. you know, I'm telling you. Well, that's it. And I've learned like, just like this, it's like, Oh, it's, it's better to a lot of these digital filming guys will be like, Oh, I, I oversaturate everything with light. And then I fix it in post. The, and then it's like, but for me, it's like, I would rather. No, no, no. no I want to. This is what I learned in music school. <laughs> I, I, that's how you really know I'm privileged. Cause I have, yeah. You also went to music school. I have an English music and art degree. <laughs> oh, damn, three degrees. Well, two of them are minors. Yeah. So I don't know if those count as degrees. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You think minors count? Don't talk about minors, dude. Oh, well, I mean, how else are we going to get our coal? Your t-shirt. You know. But, uh... I thought you were on Michael Jackson status. Uh-oh. Me? <laughs> no! <laughs> um... <laughs> I've been trying to get you to do the no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but that's the Henri Magi. I know. Well, no, we better not. T- we got to cut that part out. No, it'd be all right. Um, but uh, I don't even know what I was talking about anymore. You got an art degree. Oh, 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 oh. But anyway, shooting. this is okay. Okay. So about fixing things in post. Yeah. What I was taught in in music school is like when it comes to recording. And this is music, but I I feel the same way about film. You got to do get as much as it you of of it in performance, right? Because like it's less fixing at the other end. So if you can get it as perfect as possible in the performance, yeah, then it's like you're not trying to spend hours trying to fix it, and you may never be able to fix it in post. Yeah, like if I could. I think I have the raw footage from last year's World of Wheels still. And uh-huh. if I show you that raw footage and then show you the raw footage right. from this year, you'll be like, oh, my God. Like, it looks so much better. And there's this one shot that, like, just, like, dude, it's like, fuck, I should have. Like, and now I know next year, like, oh, if you get in front of the cars with the really good lights. Like, there's this one shot that's just like, fuck, this looks primo. To where I was like, I was like impressed myself. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I've been trying to learn, but it's like, I, you could send me a lot of shit mm-hmm. about 3D printing and how to do it and all these things, but I would never really fucking learn unless I just came. It was with you and we were like, okay, th- this is how you do it. And then I could ask those questions like, oh, why do you do that? Like, yeah. Why do you do that? And if I can learn things that way, I've got it down. Yeah, I think for me is like the way I learn a lot of stuff is 
I just make a project. Yeah. Like I didn't know how to use Blender until this album cover because I was like, oh, I really want that building but in a different like fake weird background. So I had to like learn how to use make yeah. it in Blender and I spent like hours and hours just in Blender or yeah, I mean that's how I've learned anything is I just but with so it was the 3D printer and I was like, "Why well, I want to th- 3D print that gun." Yeah. And so I have to go get a 3D printer and yeah. do it. And it took me years before I actually got one, but uh but yeah, I mean it's like uh I feel you on that. It's like I can't just cuz I know people who can just like read books on like production or cameras and like retain it all and they know yeah no like even whistle. when you came over to help me with the audio and we like watched that video like even me trying to do it myself i'm still like well i don't you know with the fucking ears sometimes mm-hmm. it's like i don't i guess it sounds like that. <laughs> it sounds then i'll just go back and watch the old old episodes where mm-hmm. it was like absolute shit with just like a shotgun mic on top of my cannon and it's like <laughs> well it sounds much better than this one yeah right. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's just like building, you know, I always feel like that's the the way to go about things is like you just start simple yeah, and build. I just see so many projects or businesses fail because it's like they come out with like all the best tools and all the best everything yeah. and, you know, and then it's just like it bombs because you've just bought too much stuff and you don't know what you're doing. And- right. And that's what I, so yeah. And I, I have to catch myself sometimes and go, no, 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 no. You've got enough. Create with what you have. Yeah. I mean, because it's like, it's, it's cool to get new toys, mm-hmm. you know, but then it's like, sometimes it's like, Oh no, I don't, I don't need that. Yeah. For me, I always am like, especially with the business. I'm always like, if you get that, is that going to pay for itself and more? Yeah. You know, like that's, the only reason I got a van for the business is I had to kept renting a van to move other people's work. Right. And then I was like, oh, okay, well. Just that, get a van. Just get a van that brings work in. So it's like, it's the same for me with like, that's why I probably took so long to get a 3D printer because I was like, uh, you know, is it just, because I almost bought a bigger 3D printer. Yeah. And then I was like, I was like, no, you're not allowed to buy that 3D printer until you start selling your art. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like. Like sell that copyright. Yeah, sell yeah. that copyright. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm. I think the your podcast is getting better looking and sounding. And yeah, and that's a, that's all I keep trying to aim for is like make it sound better. And you had a really bad choice of guests this week, but that's the only. Yeah, yeah. the guest is really shit this week. Yeah. I was like desperate. No you know, I was like, everyone's gonna be like, oh. Oh, not no. that guy. I, that's they say that every time about me. They're like, oh, oh no, yeah. Like, <laughs> again no, but here? then I, I'm excited. Like it's, I'm pumped. Like, because because of the winter, I think I sort of started venturing off in my head, being like, we could, I could do this thing and that thing, mm-hmm. and I started wanting to do too much, and it's like, no, 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 no. we're doing too much. And like we talked about, like come the winter time again. Maybe we'll get back to live streaming, right? It's experimental time. Yeah, like maybe we'll go do some more live streaming. And we might still do the occasional. I might do the occasional. Like, oh, it's Friday night. I've got not shit going on. Let me just fucking jump in here. Let me jump on and see what's going on. You know what I mean? But. Are you going to live stream the arm wrestling though still? Oh, no, I'm still doing that stuff. I still want to do things like that. And I still want to do. Rumor has it. They're going to sell. Glizzies, naked glizzies. Just the hot dog, no bun. Who's that's that's what Hillsiders said. What? Why would they sell the just the hot dog? I don't. You know, Adam's gonna not compete. He's just gonna suck down glizzies all night. Yeah, but Adam eat a glizzy one bite. Really? Whole. Wow. Pretty. That's a skill. Back in the day when Instagram first came out, I was I was on drugs, but I, <laughs> I used to sit at the 403 Club and I'd wait for people to get to their last bite of the hot dog and I'd take pictures of them and I'd be like, Jesus Christ, can you believe this is one bite? He ate this much of this hot dog. <laughs> They'd be like, dude, you fucking suck. Uh, that's a good one. That would be a good uh, Snapchat. I had a really great Snapchat channel. Or not Snapchat. I'm sorry, Vine channel. Yeah. And it was... 
This is back when I didn't have the beard, and I'd make a fart sound. Yeah. And then you would turn real quickly to a person, and they'd look startled, and that was the end of the video. Yeah. They always looked super guilty. I always wanted to have a website. It was just chickseatinghotdogs.com. Really? And just pictures of chicks eating hot dogs. <laughs> I'll say my favorite Reddit chant, or sorry, not Reddit, my favorite. Uh, uh, Subreddit? No, what was before that where people would share pictures on before Instagram? Uh, Zanga? No, no. Facebook? MySpace? No. Fuck. Blogspot? WordPress? It was, was kind of like a blog. Well, anyway, it was called. It was called. Uh, Indifferent cats in amateur porn. <laughs> and it would just be like, you know, these cats just looking so uninterested in their surrounding environments of lovemaking. Oh, there'd be like porno going on. With, yeah, it'd be like a couple. It'd be like a couple doing it, and then there'd and be the like cats two just cats like, just there like. Yeah, like sitting at the funny. end of the bed being like, couldn't be bothered. Yeah. So That's hilarious. Which is. You know, kind of something that actually happens. It totally happens. You know, they don't even watching you. No. It's kind of insulting. It is. You're like, well, we're not even that good at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that, uh, you Are know. Are you going to do your outro? Yeah, I'm going to do the outro now. Okay. Did you want to try it? Hey, man. <laughs> is that how I sound? No. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, is All that... right, well, uh, fucking guys, guys, if you, you made, made it, it this, <laughs> if you made it this, this far, far. <laughs> that's what I say every time. <laughs> if you made it this far, uh, Anson, thanks for coming by. Also, is weird thing because Anson and I met. I guess it's probably like four months ago now, something like that. No, online. it was this year. It was only two months ago. No, it was in December Mm-mm. when I was streaming. No. Yeah. It was in the cold snap. I guess so. It was several months ago. But then we quickly realized, like two weeks into it, that uh, he lived two blocks away from me. So it was pretty I nice. walked to this interview. Yeah, he walked over here. And now, like, when I need technical help, I just send him messages like, God damn it, this sounds like shit. <laughs> and he's like, I'll come by and help you. <laughs> yeah, but then I get all your car knowledge. Yeah, then you do get the car knowledge. It works out. <laughs> Neighbors. Neighbors. Won't you be my neighbor? Well, thanks for watching. I'll put all the links to all the shit. Black magic television. Yes. In your eye. And your brains. And maybe in your hearts. We'll see you next time. Wink. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like and subscribe buttons and check out one of these other videos. We'll see you next time.